Hello people and welcome back to News Review. This is the third week of the SAO collab, where the main news is that the GGO part of the collab is here, along with the associated new cards. I'll be going over their skills and giving some comments on whether you should get them as well. Thankfully this news is not as long as the last ones, but still kind of lengthy, so open up the patch notes, link in the description, if you want to follow along and let's get right into it. First off, we have a new horror stage and the associated card Death Gun, a Dark Human, a CD7, release lock skills of all members. This is uh, not that special, but useful in some situations, especially considering this is a GGO card, of which there aren't that many right now. Explode all heart runestones and electrified runestones to generate enchanted human dark runestones, that's fine. Uh, electrify all enemies, and if the enemies are human, inactivate them for one round. There are a ton of dark humans who can electrify the enemy that I'll put up on screen right now, but all of them are Posca Lab cards, so it's a good idea to grab this as well. I'm not sure why they keep making dark humans electrify, it's almost as bad as the collab light humans breaking puddle shield. Order one round, the character's attack times 4, and its damage dealt to electrified enemies times 2 additionally as well. Uh, moving on, uh, there will be a new currency of credits uh, along with the core and yurd from the uh, uh, SAO and ALO part of the shop respectively. Um, these two new cards you see right here of uh, what I like to call Femboy Kirito and the new uh, sign in with a gun uh, are free characters that you can redeem in the shop. And I'll be going over their skills right now. First off is their leader skill, they share the same leader skill apparently, uh, they run a primarily human team where human attack times 9, HP and recovery times 1.8, GGO members HP and attack times 1.5 additionally, once again, apart from them it just seems to be them and death gun who are GGO I think at least for right now, hopefully there will be more uh, GGO cards in the fourth week if they hope to make the series any good at all. Uh, by dissolving one or more groups of five or more runestones, team attack times 4.5. This will uh, likely be satisfied uh, with their team skill. I'll talk about that in just a second. Damage received minus 30%. That's quite nice. By dissolving earth and dark, recover 50% HP at the end of the round. This is useful, but not that useful because it doesn't recover HP immediately. So if the enemy hits you uh, in the middle, then you know this can't even activate in time. Moving on to their team skill, uh, extend the movement time by 4 seconds, you ignore burning and tornado, uh, you ignore tornado, you don't remove tornado, that's a big distinction. Uh, everything has the effect of earth and dark, by dissolving earth and dark, earth or dark, sorry, team attack times 4.5, for each reason dissolved in the first batch, one enchanted reason of the corresponding member's attribute will be generated in the columns below, uh, Fembor Kirito and the sniper sign in. To the max 15 enchanted runestones to be dropped in each column so basically below uh kirito there will be dark runestones and below sinan there will be earth runestones if team hp is full at the end of the round uh kirito and sinan skill cd is minus one as well they don't seem to be especially strong leaders since there are like three ggo cards in total currently but there may be more next week as i said before they are a little bit limiting in terms of only having cards from their own series and the one unique thing is uh, generating 15 earth or dark in their own column. Uh, this team skill can be activated if they are leader, there is no restriction on the ally so that's another uh, good point for them I guess but overall I don't think they're that strong. Moving on to their actives, uh, Sinan is an earth human CD7. Uh, the first ever earth human to set your recovery to zero, very nice. Uh, if I need to, I will definitely be using this card in Hideyoshi. Uh, human and Alpha attack times 1.8, and GG members attack times 1.5. Additionally, this is not that much, but you know, a fair bit of attack. Uh, the character's attack damage will be dealt regular loss of puzzle shield and defense, which is once again, you know, fairly common uh, for puzzle shield. Defense is just like you know, if it's there, you know, it can solve a very limited number of shields. And then finally, each round before attacks deal a non-attributive damage of 2 million to an enemy regardless of defense each round. Uh, dissolving resources is necessary, and the skill stays in play. This is kind of like Yoko if you were here for that. Uh, all the above are stats. The skill can be deactivated anytime. Upon deactivation, GGO members attack times 3.3. This is quite a high multiplier and fully recover your HP. No CD reduction though, which is kind of a shame. 
in the active anyway, I did talk about the speed reduction with the team skill. Uh, the blast damage each round, I guess, is the most unique thing. It can be useful, but less so nowadays since enemy HP gets really high and this is only 2 million. This is useful for, I guess, exposing invisible enemies. Uh, but, you know, even normal signing can do that. Moving on to Fenborg Hirido. Uh, dark human, CD6, deal on earth and a dark damage of 25 million to all enemies regardless of defense and enchanted moonstone shield. 25 million is once again not even that much in today's numbers. Uh, but, I mean, it's fine, it's something, it deals earth and dark. Uh, and I did confirm that uh, blasting the enemy does like solve part of the quintet attack field, so uh, Rosalia actually is a good card. Uh, going back on that opinion I had like two weeks ago, if you remember that. Uh, turns the top row into enchanted dark and the bottom row into enchanted earth. For one round, the character's attack time is four and ignores defense. You dodge the first attack of each enemy, and if Sinon is in the team, the skill stays in play for one more round. This, the dodging functionality is the only unique thing I see in this card, um, and all the other stuff is kind of... We've seen this, 25 million is not that high, uh, ignoring defense doesn't really like help this card's case. Uh, he has. They both have bonding skills with each other, where they get combo count plus one if you dissolve the character's character moonstone in the first batch. Nothing really that special. Uh, they also have their own dragon wares. Not that special once again uh, for their dragon wear skills. It's just you know more of the same extra attack kind of thing. Moving along to a new challenge stage uh, of the 75th floor in the labyrinth. The Skull Reaper, Fire Demon, CD6, explode the second, third, and fourth rows to generate Enchanted Fire and Heart of fixed numbers and fixed positions. This is not the whole board, just give them the whole board. Why didn't you give them the whole board? This makes the card, like, you know, exponentially worse. Uh, since you're so close to exploding the whole board, but you just don't. I don't know why. The fixed word might be good though, I don't know. Uh, we'll see when it comes out. Uh, for one run after dissolving runestones, the first batch of runestones to be dropped will be 15 fire and 15 heart. The dropping runestones will be adjacent according to their types. This is a very unique functionality, and so I do recommend you get one if you can. And lastly is Elf Kirito's hidden team skill, and a hidden dragonware I guess. Uh, he gets the Excalibur dragonware. This dragon is actually really good, not for its skill functionality in terms of dragon rare skills or craft skills, because uh, it's just more of the same, you know, extend rares moon time, attack like multipliers and stuff. Uh, there is like CD2 for four random elves, that's one good thing, I guess. But for the team skill, that's really where this uh, dragon wear becomes good. Uh, when this elf Kirito is in the team and it is equipped with Excalibur. At the beginning and end of each round, turn the column below Kirito equipped with Excalibur into Enchanted Elf Runestones. And for each Elf Runestone dissolved in the first patch, combo count plus 1 to the max plus 5. I believe this is the first case in which one card on its own as a member just brings with it like a plus combo functionality. This makes Kirito even better than he was before. And it's like an even more like even more reason to pull for him if you haven't done so already. Uh, for the new cards this time, this is the uh, tier list I came up with. Um, basically, Death Gun is fine, not that special between Get One and Farm with Normal Stamina. Sinon I think is a little better because he's the first ever Earth human to uh, reduce your recovery to zero, so you know you can farm him. I mean, these cards are not really stamina based, so maybe I should update these tiers. But yeah, that's where I would put him if stamina was uh, the kind of gauge we're going with. Uh, Fenboy Kirito, not that good. I mean, not, nothing that unique. Dodging is fine. So I put him in between the uh, two lower tiers. This guy, 15 fire and 15 heart is really the only functionality. And you really won't be seeing that often. But if you do need him one day in a pinch, get one. Uh, no card is truly trash. Uh, and that will be it for this week's news review. Uh, shorter than the last week's thank god uh, if you like this please leave a like if you have any questions leave it down in the comments below and if you like this please subscribe it gives me motivation to make more videos like this and i'll see you in the next one see ya